So next we have Elizabeth Gore, and she is an entrepreneur and has an artificial intelligence company called Alice that helps women start companies. She also works with Dell to identify and grow small and medium-sized businesses, fueling the expansion of global entrepreneurship. She was also a Peace, for Peace Corps volunteer, and she has accomplished a lot with the United Nations and was listed on People's Top 100 Extraordinary Women. She was also featured on CBS, ABC, CNN, Fox Business, Time, and so much more. So without further to do, Elizabeth Gore. Howdy, how is everyone? Good, Good? stand up for a second, Let's stretch out. Make sure you're not sleeping on me. Maybe turn around, give the person next to you a big hug. Let's start with that. We could all use a little more kindness, right? Big hugs, I like it. All right, so does most everyone live in California? You can have a seat. Californians, raise your hands. All right, all right. So I live up in uh, Sonoma County. That's my hot husband right there. Wave hot husband. Hi. He's, he's my manservant today. Isn't that cool? Uh, the reason that's really cool is he's actually elected official up in Sonoma County. So um, I back him up on days. He has a speech after this, and I'll go support him. And that's what we do for each other, right? Right? All right. So I'm here to talk to you all today about entrepreneurship. And I have this fundamental deep belief that you can have a profitable company and do a lot of good with the world. And you know, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know where I learned that was in the UN. So I worked for the United Nations for 10 years. I'm actually originally from Texas. And I think I might have been the only Texan who, you're an Aggie? Oh, nice. Giga Mags. So, um, you know, a lot of people think about the United Nations and they're like, you know, incredibly smart people at UNFPA, but, you know, I was a cowgirl in Texas. I grew up a bunch of smelly cows, believe it or not. Um, I did not have an Ivy League education, and what was kind of interesting is I was, I was a bit different than a lot of UN leaders, um, but, but I think what I brought was some uh, normal talk to the UN. So I could go out actually and see all this great work of the UN, then I could come home and talk to folks like my grandma, who only had a second grade education, and really talk about how what she could do in her own backyard in Texas could actually impact people around the world in supporting the UN. And I say that because all of you have a huge power to impact people, whether you're in your own backyard or you decide to join the UN or the Peace Corps. That's where I met my hot husband was in the Peace Corps. We lived in Bolivia and South America. We met on horseback, believe it or not riding and cross, um, you're like, oh, it's a hard way to meet a boyfriend though, I'll tell you that, so maybe, maybe do it in high school, but anyways, uh, but when I was in the UN, I, I saw over and over that entrepreneurs, so small business owners, were the folks solving some pretty cool problems. So we'd go in, let's just, I would spend a lot of time in refugee camps, so we would set up these huge environments in two to three weeks for thousands and thousands of people, mostly women and children, and then you'd see these businesses pop up in two weeks, and folks roll into refugee camps with usually nothing but their children. And it's so entrepreneurial to think about, well, what do we all need every day, right? What do we all need? We need food, we need shelter, we need water, but you know what else we need? We need to get our hair done right? We need clothes. We need entertainment. So it's really interesting. The most businesses I saw were actually beauty businesses in entrepreneur camps, or excuse me, in refugee camps where women, you know, still have dignity. They still wanted to look good. So you'd see stands where folks were doing each other's hair. You'd see all sorts of things, but then you'd see the next level up, sanitation removal. So folks would figure out a way to do human waste removal and make money off of it. Somebody would rig one computer with a solar system, uh, solar panels, and suddenly you'd see lines of people who would want to get on Facebook. But you know why? Not to like, like someone or give someone a smooch online, but actually to find their families, right? Really awesome entrepreneurial skills. So now fast forward as I'm an entrepreneur and my company helps women and minorities and veterans launch companies. 
And the reason I chose that was because women actually generally put 90% of their income back into their communities and their families. So I thought, my gosh, if we can help all these great people launch companies, think of the economic boost that we'll give these communities. So I have this fundamental belief that whether your billion dollar idea is a company or it's saving a billion lives, that we all have that power. And if your company is so massive, I hope one of you has a trillion dollar company someday, we really have to think of a triple bottom line instead of a single one. People, planet, and profit, right? Profitability is very important for a company. But how are you treating your employees? What are your values? What are you donating? What are you giving back? How is your products made? How are people paid downstream that are creating those products, right? How much water do you use? So all those things are really important. So I want to do a quick exercise. Um, I'm going to come out and start picking on everybody. I want you guys to think about, you women and gentlemen, um, what is your billion dollar idea, but what would the impact of that idea be, okay? I already heard some great stuff about what causes you support. Hand these down for me, okay? What each of you take, I don't know, I think, I hope I have enough for everyone. So what would that billion dollar, I, dollar idea be? So I'll tell you my first one, and it was about saving a billion lives. It wasn't about money, it was malaria. Y'all know about malaria? What is malaria? Anybody know? Raise your hand. Go ahead. <coughs> It's a disease caused oh, by sorry. mosquitoes. That's right. Is that what you're going to say? OK. Um, so a disease transmitted by mosquitoes. That's right. So a few folks in here, bring some in the back for the folks here, and we'll share, OK? So mosquitoes, gnarly mosquitoes. Do you know that they only bite at night? Did you all know that? You did? Are you like a malaria expert? What's your name? <laughs> What she eat? And where are you from? Where I was born. Where do you live now? I live in Los Gatos. Los Gatos. Okay, that's right. So mosquitoes bite at night. Hey, dude, you got to share. Pass it down. They only bite once. That's right. And they're females. So you never want a girlfriend that only bites at night and only bites once, right? It's not good. So I created a campaign called Nothing But Nets. Has anyone ever heard of that? Nothing But Nets? Nice. Thank you. So. The only thing we have, because we don't have vaccines, are malaria nets that people sleep in overnight. So I got pretty interested in these, and I thought, my gosh, if we could get nets out to every refugee on the continent of Africa, that would be a really big deal. So you know who I partnered with on this? A net company? Fair question, but no. Who is the best basketball player on the planet? Stephen Curry. That's right. Please tell me you all know who that is. OK, all right. So the National Basketball Association, me and this other sports writer were like, hey, they have nets. They have a lot of fans. So what we did is we created this Nothing But Nets campaign. $10 could buy a bed net. You all still can do it. Nothingbutnets.net. And we raised millions and millions of dollars. I think we're up to $80 million, which equates to a $10 net, four people sleep under it, how many lives is that? It's a lot. I don't do math, so you can guess, OK? I say that because a $10 bill could save someone's life at that point, right? I could never go do all of that. I could never work in Africa in a way that I would love to. But what we did is the power of partnerships. We partnered with the Boy Scouts, basketball, soccer, you name it, um, television statements. But most importantly, we partnered with youth. That was my first kind of billion dollar idea. So I want you guys to flip your thing over and where there is usually a face on a bill, I want you to write what would your billion dollar idea be? So what would it be? Is it a campaign? Is it a nonprofit? Is it a company? I love companies that help people. So what is that billion dollar idea? And this, this is not a test. I don't like tests. So think, think, think. I'm giving you 30 seconds, so I'm coming to you. Here I come. Uh-oh, pressure. And you know what? Do you know what our attention span is in the United States? What do you think it is? Ooh, I don't know. Five seconds? Five seconds. Close. What's your name? Georgia Riccardi. What's your attention span? 
Oh, moving on. Just kidding. Yeah, right. Not very high. Do you know a goldfish is seven seconds, and the, and we are six. <laughs> now I say that because whatever thing, whatever you build, whatever you build, your campaign, you better start writing, dude. I bet you have a lot of you have a big head. I bet there's a lot of good ideas in there. Come on. Um, so whatever this good idea is, it's got to catch people's attention, right? So is it going to save lives? Is it going to make money? Is it going to have some kind of impact? All right. Ooh, you're writing, you're writing an entire constitutional theory here. I like that. And you're drawing a diagram. What's yours? What are you doing? Um, a rocket engine. A rocket engine. What's your name? Um, Matthew. Where do you live? Um, East Bay. Um, East Bay. Okay, got it. So why are you drawing a rocket? Um, because I think like an improved um like system like propulsion will help us get into space and we could do a lot of things in space. Space. Did you know that? Our iPhone now has the same compute power as the first rocket that went into space. You already knew that. You're like, yeah, old news. Huh? What'd you say? Is it more? I bet you're right. I thought it was more, not just now, like earlier. Well, I'm a lot, I'm, I'm old, so it was probably like 10 years ago. Does that sound right? What, what's your name? Shreya. Shreya. It's very nice to meet you, and I like the peacock on your shirt. Okay, so coming back, what is your what is your long paragraph you're writing on your your bill? What are you gonna do? Um, I had this idea uh, last year, which was to use um, algae, and algae has like this siliporous outer edge to it, uh -huh. and it's to use that. To First of all, I have no idea what siliporous means, so yeah. enlighten me. It's just like a soft outside area, okay. and then using <laughs> using that, you can and I guess kind of inject. Um, medicine in there, so it kind of be like I will. My idea was to use it for cancer, so it was inject um, the medicine into that and be able to like swallow it. And is there someone from Stanford here? This this is your girl. That's amazing. How old are you? Okay, so in fifteen. My lord, I think at fifteen I was scooping cow poop. You're amazing. Okay, so we have a rocket and we have algae that is utilized for better. Um, um, ingesting medicine. Ingesting medicine. Okay, so think about that. Now, how would we do that is the question. Are we doing, is that a nonprofit? Is that a for-profit? I'm going to come up back here. So all of these ideas are really important, and I, I fundamentally believe in partnerships. The reason the United Nations is really important is it's the only organization on the planet that's in every country in the world, and they really believe in partnerships. Oh, I'm going to pick on you. Come on in. What's your name? So you're 15, right? I've, I hope I'm 15. Okay. <laughs> Cupertino. What's your idea? So I have done a lot of work as Executives Without Borders, which is a lot of partnership work. And the last one that I recall was in Haiti, where we did after the earthquake with all the water bottles that were there, took that, worked with Nike, and converted those to shoes. Nike shoes. Nike. Awesome. And so the people who collected those bottles, they got shoes. So then they were able to go get educated, walk to school, and so on. So did that with the Clinton Foundation. So I thought that was cool. That is very cool. So partnerships, everyone bringing their, their unique assets to the table coming together. Really good idea. Who is a for-profit company that they want to talk about? This guy with this awesome leather jacket. All right, what's your name? Clearly, you love Cheetos because there's two of them here. Uh, that's, that's Was that yours? I love Cheetos. <laughs> All right, Logan. Where, where uh, here. I love Cheetos too, so it's okay. You live in this building? No. Well, San Francisco. Got it. What's your idea? Uh, so, my school hosts something called Startup Lycee. It's, Lycee stands for high school in French. Okay. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> And usually it's something more simple, so a, either a software, an application, that uh, one solves a problem. Uh, usually it's towards more uh, student students. And uh, one thing that schools look, look to is uh, hours of service. And the problem is that usually people can't find these hours of service by doing something they like. So I thought that maybe there was an application because certain people can do certain things better than others and vice versa. So I thought if I can, uh, so the application would 
uh, you would ask someone and then you had like this amount of service hours. So you'd say like, this will take an hour. Then the person would stay an hour at your home doing whatever they would. And they'd take your service hours or you could use those service hours and redeem them. I don't want to say redeem them. And so uh, actually have service hours, which are what schools, universities look for. And you do that all through an application, software. That is a great idea. So artificial intelligence and machine learning, that's what my company uses to match people to what they need in their companies. You could absolutely do that. That's an awesome idea. All right, we're gonna do one, thank you. And Cheetos are great. Do you prefer puffs or the crunchy ones? You've never had puffs? I'm gonna send no. you some. Oh, oh man, ooh, who's for puffs? Who's for the crunchies? Oh, this is a UN debate in the making. Okay, thank you. One more idea. Who wants to tell me about their idea? Or I'll come pick on someone. Yes, all right, come to the back. Here I come. I'm gonna get my workout in today. Okay, go for it. I'm not really sure if it's a profit or non-profit. Okay, so my name is Isabella. I'm from Dublin, California. And my idea is to build more animal shelters in countries with homeless animals, like dogs and cats because many animals are getting run over by cars or they're getting put down by kill shelters and there's either too many on the streets and people are complaining so they're just putting them down since they're just like roaming the streets and if we were to build more shelters saying like countries in Europe and even here too more I feel a lot of more animals lives will be saved. I think that's a great idea so you're saying your question is you wouldn't know if it's a nonprofit or for profit is that right? Definitely could. So she, she's asking, I think it's a great idea. So if you didn't hear, her idea is to increase um, the environment for animal shelters in different countries. And, you know, it, I think we heard something earlier about how hard it is to raise money, right? And that takes up a lot of time. So maybe a for-profit model would be that people come and pay you to actually take those animals, which would be awesome. Place them in your home. When we go, usually for summer, into Bulgaria, I see a lot of homeless animals and pretty much I, I haven't seen any shelters there, which is pretty sad and I've wanted to build shelters there and, and in other countries too. Well, I think that's an awesome idea. So let's first of all give everyone's idea a big round of applause because ideas are really important. So what I would love for everyone to do is to write your great idea on uh, whether it's in a drawing form or a logo or whatever that is. And I want you to post it and tag it, if it's okay, to Goodler. Um, just at Goodler. At Goodler, G-O-O-D-D-L-E-R. And then also on the flip side, um, my group is called Alice, so you can post to Hello Alice. And what we do is really promote great ideas because Someone else might have a similar idea and bring a different skill set, right? And be able to help you, whether it's money, whether it's a company, whether it's an organization, and so on. But my point in all of this, you all, is that your ideas can come in a lot of different forms. But I think what's really important is to think about what is the long-term impact you're going to have. But where you are right now, so I have a six-year-old, we have a six-year-old and a three-year-old, and I think a lot about... We just went through the fires in Sonoma. Did everyone kind of watch that on the news? Yeah. So six of our family members lost their homes. And you think about things, right? They get really overwhelming. So my job has always been global issues, particularly around women and girls and malaria and health. But then one day something's going to happen in your own community. And how do you give back there too, right? And it's okay to think about both, right? Think global, act local. I'm a big believer in that. If you look at my husband right now, his shoes, Jimmy, can you come up here really quick? I'm sorry, I'm going to use you as a prop. So I looked down this morning. It's my manservant, Jimmy. He, he, he just drove me here. I wasn't expecting this. But if you look. <laughs> so Jimmy, um, I, I bring him up here because there's two ways to impact the world, I think. So I, I worked with the UN, and now I work with a global company, and I really think globally. And even though we were both Peace Corps, Jimmy ran for office locally. So he runs the county of Sonoma, okay? So he is a supervisor. And so I hope all of you think about some kind of public service in your life, whether it's school board, whether it's Peace Corps, Teach for America, run for office, whatever that is. 
But after the fires, you know, Jimmy's full-time job right now is to support people locally, right? And I looked down this morning and I noticed that he has ashes all over his shoes, right? And it just brought home to me that it's okay to keep globally minded everything we need to do, but it's also so important to look to your left and your right and see what your community needs every single day because that's where things start. And if the foundation there isn't strong, then it's very hard to act globally as well. So thank you for having Jimmy and I here today. We love you guys. I hope all your big ideas go big. And yes, ma'am. Why is it named Alice? Yeah, you can have a seat, sir. Thank you. Um, so, and yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions for a second. Um, so we, I love the story of Alice in Wonderland. Do you all know that story? Yes. So, yeah. So the original book is by this guy, Lewis and Carol, Lewis Carroll. And Alice was this crazy adventurer. She actually had to go through all these barriers. She had to get big. She had to get small. She had to negotiate. She had to get chased. She had enemies. She had friends. And Alice, to me, is this character of overcoming everything, every obstacle, right? Uh, and I love that. But she also did it with grace and kindness, which I, I think is important. So, so we named our software Alice because it's our job to help every entrepreneur get through all those hurdles. So other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, number of women getting funded up to 20% by 2020. Would you like to join the process? Oh, yes. Okay. What is your name? Sophia. Sophia, where do you live? I live in Livermore. Is your mom here? Yeah, she's okay. right there. You're awesome mom, by the way. So Sophia just asked something that's very important. She said, did I know that only 2% of women get venture capital? And what basically that translates is, is all the women trying to build businesses that need financing or money to do it, only 2% of them get it. Even though when they do get it, they're actually exponentially more successful than most, right? And your mom is trying to change that, and I will join you. Way to go. Let's give you a round of applause. Love it. You have a very good spokesperson. Okay, one more question. Any more questions? Awesome. Well, thank you all. Have a great day. And remember, if you put purpose into profit, all of you can change lives, okay? Thank you. Thank you.